Hey everyone, so I just want to give a quick update. The hospitals that we were building, they're now up and running, and they're running pretty smoothly now. We're getting a lot of patients in, we're treating them, and things are looking pretty good. So naturally, on my spare time, I've been reading a book about a hospital that is not running very well with One Flow of the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey, a book that he wrote partially based on his experiences working in the night shift of a mental institution while also taking LSD for the CIA in an operation called MK Ultra. So there's some pretty interesting writing passages within the book for a guy like that. The story goes is that Chief Bronin, the narrator of the book, he's been there committed for about 20 years at a mental institution. In comes a new patient called McMurphy who is transferred over from a prison labor camp and he's trying to live out the rest of his sentence within the institution faking a mental illness. And during this time, he just causes all sorts of havoc. What I like about the story is that Chief Brahman, he is not a unreli he is a unreliable narrator. He has some kind of psychosis and has these very vivid images in his head and dreams and he thinks they're real. These delusions of machines inside the walls, um, inside the workers and the aides of who are working in the institution. So there's a lot of surreal imagery throughout the book, making the main antagonist, Nurse Ratched, one of the most terrifying female villains that I've had the pleasure of reading. As a nurse, she has the ability to get inside your head, but also has the power to give you electric shock therapy and lobotomies, meaning that she has complete control over you and the patients. That's a terrifying thought. So it's a good thing that Mick Murphy does come in there. He tries to break the status quo that's being put forth in this hospital. And it's sad for me to say that I don't like McMurphy as a character. While he does provide these small victories for the patients, he's there with his own ulterior motives. He left a prison labor camp, faked a mental illness, and got himself committed because he feels it would be an easier time there. He swindles these patients out of their money that they have. And he may or may not probably actually had raped a teenage girl. So there's that. Another thing that I'm not a big fan of in the book is that this is a product of its time, meaning that there is some casual racism, not antagonistic racism in the van that McMurphy doesn't call the African-American characters um, anything to demean them constantly. In fact, if anything, the African-American characters who are the aides, who are the orderlies of the hospital, they have the power. But the casual racism I'm talking about is when Chief Bronham only refers to them as the black boys and nothing else. That's how we differentiate them throughout the novel. You have the big black boy, the small black boy, the tall one, the light-skinned black boy. They have names in the novels, but they're not those names are not used to differentiate them. So when I hear the name Mr. Washington, I don't know which orderly is they're referring to. And that's what I mean by casual racism. These characters are referred to just black boy. And that being said, uh, because the book is a product of its time, taking at its literal face value, not its metaphorical, the metaphor for the story is very much that you need to stand up to this oppressive culture, this culture being the 1950s, which was very prominent at the time. It was a culture clash. But the literal story is a man coming into a mental institution and inspiring everyone there that they don't have a mental illness, that they're fine, it's just in their head. They just don't have the guts to make it out there, man that you don't need antidepressants. You just need to hike in the woods, man. That's your antidepressant, which is not something you should end your novel on because your mental health is very, very important. And if you can go get help, you should. But what also is important is your physical health. 
So wash your hands. If you go out, wear a face covering and practice social distancing. And I'll be back with another book.